Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer aka The Design Ninja. What we're going to take a look at in this video is creating a long shadow effect in Illustrator and we're going to look at three or four different ways of doing that. Now the first one, I'm going to use live text by the way in all of these examples. But the first one is using a blend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one down to the bottom and then I'm going to alt drag a copy up here like so, because I actually want this one to be in front. Now let's just move this over a little way like so. I'll then select both things here and create a blend. Now I can do that either with the blend tool and click on the first one and then the second one or I can go to the object menu and choose blend make. And you can see there's a shortcut for that too. Option command B or alt control B on Windows. So when I choose that, it will create this effect. Now you might think, well, that doesn't look like a long shadow. It just looks like a blend between the two. And you'd be right. What we need to do is to edit the blend options. So I'm just gonna come along and double click on the blend tool in the toolbox you could also do that by going to the object menu and down to the blend options there as well and what i'm going to do is choose instead of smooth color specified steps now here it's using three steps so you can see the first step and the last step aren't counted it's just the steps in between now i'm going to wrap that up to about 200 like so okay and turn on preview and you can see now I'm getting something that is starting to look like a long shadow. Okay, so that's one way I could do it. I'm going to click OK here and show you one of the advantages that you have from using a blend. If I just get my direct selection tool just for a second and select one part of the blend. In fact, I'll do the bit on the very top here. Okay, so the first step, if you like, and change the color you can see that I can do that. Now, if I wanted this to have a uh, shadow immediately under the text, I'd actually have to create a third step in the blend, and it's perfectly possible to do that. But this is one way of creating that blend, and you can see you can just move that around like so. The greater the distance, the more steps you'll need. There is another way to do that. You can actually go ahead and go to the blend options and choose specified distance as well. Okay, so if I take this down to something like 0.001pt for points, okay, in fact, it's gone below the actual minimum it can do there. So 0.036 millimeters there, then it doesn't look too bad. However, on large pieces of work, you might have the problem of actually seeing some of the steps of the blend, although this one seems to be okay. So the second method is using a transform. So if I've got my text just here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another fill to this, okay? So I'm just gonna hold down the command key, that would be control on Windows and hit the slash key to create my second fill. And now if I go into the appearance panel, you can see that I've got my fill there like so. Okay, now I can go to the characters and add an effect, or I could add yet another fill underneath it. It doesn't really do anything to the size of the file, it's just another thing. In fact, I think I'll do that just for now and change the one underneath to black like so, and then keeping that focused, I'm going to click on the effects button just here. Again, if you wanted to go via the menu system, you could go to the effect menu to do this and just come down and choose distort and transform, transform. And this dialog opens like so. Now this one can get you some better results, but it often involves a little bit of calculation in order to make it work well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna add in just a handful of copies just to start with, like 10 here. And then I'm going to offset this slightly. Now you can actually choose an angle 
uh, to do that as well. But I'm going to leave this at offsetting just a shade. So I'll just go ahead and choose one millimeter here. So it's going off to the right hand side. If I went the other way and chose minus one, it goes off to the left hand side. That's because of the way the geometry is measured in Illustrator, typically from the top left hand corner. And now if I go ahead and go vertically here, you can see that I've got my long shadow starting to emerge and it's trading off these two things, the distance across to the distance down and then introducing enough copies, okay, to make it work. So I'm just going to go back to having just one copy and then I'm going to bring this in really tight. So I'm just going to go for 0 0.03. Three six, just there, okay, on the horizontal, okay, and I'm going to do the same pretty much just here, okay, on the vertical, just for the moment. Now I can start to dial in my copies. Now, of course, if it's not working the way you want it to, as in here, for me, it's going across too evenly, then you can start to vary the horizontal or vertical depending here so if I go for the vertical now and change that okay to one millimeter you can see how that suddenly dramatically changed so I'll change this to 0.5 instead and just by modeling those things around you could do that and achieve the result you were after but it is a lot of fiddling around to actually do it so how do we do it well you could use either of the methods uh, that I've just discussed with you just there. Again, you have to watch out for that stair stepping and you can see that just there. So you've got to get these distances really just about right uh, for it to work. Okay, so again, I've gone down yet another decimal there to make that work. So you can do that or you can go ahead and use a plugin and that's what I actually use. Let's go to my next board here. So I'm going to choose my text like so. I'm going to change the color of that. Okay. And what I'm then going to do is get to my astute graphics tools. Now I happen to have all of those here in a workspace. All right. So you can see I've got all of my tools down the side here and in various other uh, different places. I've got like a separate tool tray, which is an Illustrator native thing. I'll actually just close that just for the moment. But what I have inside of these stylism tools is the AG block shadow tool. Now that will give me a dialog, which I actually don't have in my workspace just at the moment here, but like easy enough for me to add it later. But this allows me to work numerically if I want to, or by using the tool, I can simply click and drag like so. I can then determine the color of the shadow. You can see that just here. I can do lots of other things as well, such as change the scaling here. So if I bring that down, you can see how that's working. Okay. And many other things besides, right? So I've even got blend modes inside of here and opacity as well. So great scope for making long shadows. And that is the tool I use. Now, if you've not come across Astute Graphics before, okay, that's where you can get all of these amazing plugins that help you for one annual price on their annual service plan. It's really good, so do investigate that at astutegraphics.com. But for long shadows, those are the techniques I use. My favorite, the AG block shadow. Okay, the next one on from there is the transform effect and the blend, which of course has the advantage of using colors as well if you want to. And that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe and come along and join me next time here in the Work Smarter, Not Harder Dojo. But for now, we're done. See ya.